Are you tapping your foot to this? Oh my goodness, what a great classic. What a fantastic contributor to humankind, Count Basie and his orchestra was. April in Paris, I think a perfect lead-in uh, to our next guest who you have seen on television on so many of the national shows. You've heard her on radio, one of the shows we carry right here on WBSM, Laura Morelli. The author of uh, Made in Italy, Made in France, Made in the Southwest, and the historical fiction, The Gondola Maker, joins me. And folks, we have a great half hour in store for you. First of all, Cali Calimera, nice to have you with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a oh, great pleasure. I want to I want to offer you some uh, Greek uh, something sweet and a little demi tasse and a coffee or something that here. That would be wonderful. You know, around the world uh, customs are are wonderful. In Greece, we would offer you something. Everybody who comes into the house, even if we don't have anything, a glass of water and a little something. Uh, it's a tradition, I think, that uh, maybe perhaps here in America we've overlooked that. You know, we stand by the door, put our nose in between the door and say, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, you know, the, the the traditions of the old world have fascinated me for so long. And Why? You're, you're you're absolutely right. And you know, the um, the culinary traditions and those traditions of hospitality are closely linked and come from the same spirit as the handmade goods, whether we're talking about ceramics or leatherworking or making uh, fine wine or cheese, it can stem from the same cultural roots, and I find that fascinating. Why do you find it fascinating? What is it about tradition that not only plays a role, but what is it about it that attracts your passion to it? Well, you know, when I uh, first visited Venice as a 16-year-old, I had the great fortune to go there and I had this image in my head that I was supposed to buy Murano glass and come home with Murano glass in my suitcase <laughs> but I had no idea why that was uh -huh. I just had a notion really and yeah, so past lifetime <laughs> you know I found myself soon enough in the the Piazza San Marco being lured to the island of Murano which is famous for its glass making tradition I then stood in line behind several dozen Japanese and American tourists waiting at these glass factories to pay an absolutely exorbitant price for a little green glass fish, which sure. I, I still have in my office <laughs> on my windowsill. Yep, yep. But, um, you know, I was a little bit bewildered, as you can imagine, but it being in Europe as a teenager and especially as an American where we're missing a lot of those very ancient and very centuries old traditions I was lured back to study art history and so I spent a lot of years I, I studied at Tufts University here in Boston, I studied at Yale and New Haven and um, then got the opportunity to go overseas uh, many times and really dig in deeper into these artisanal traditions and you know as an art historian you, you study Leonardo da Vinci and right. these you know great artists of the past but many times these smaller um, artisanal traditions which by the way are still very much alive are overlooked and so that is really my passion really my niche and what I wish to share with people yeah you know when uh, for instance I'm of Greek descent uh, I would rather go to the little monastery making the incense rather than the souvenir shop even though I've never been <laughs> absolutely well, you know, when you travel in an unfamiliar environment, I think it's it can be intimidating because it's very difficult to tell the treasures from the trash. And, you know, I think what many people Great don't point. realize yep. is that those souvenirs in the shops are very rarely made locally. So if you're buying a little statue of the Eiffel Tower in Paris, there's a 99 percent chance that it was actually made in China. So and, and that's the truth. And it's the truth of, you know, quote unquote, Venetian magic. 
masks that are imported from Asia these days. Oh. And, and um, when you're out of your element and you're in an unfamiliar environment, it's not clear how to tell the, those uh, differences, what's authentic, what's not, what's mm-hmm. locally made, how much should you pay, yeah. how do you know if you're being um, ripped, vic- off. ripped off, how sure. do you know if you're in a tourist trap. Yeah. So my goal is to really lead travelers beyond the tourist traps and to find that cultural immersion with, through an appreciation of the art objects and, and more than that, the people who make them, who are still uh, uh, carrying on these living traditions. Wow. I, I think Consumer Reports ought to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Laura Morelli, my wonderful guest, who's going to be appearing at the Beauvoir Center for French Language Studies, organized by its revered director, uh, Dr. Mel Yokin, and uh, his wonderful wife, Cindy. Uh, They are proudly presenting their first program of the fall semester, and we want you to be aware that the uh, distinguished and the very popular, the, the national celebrity art historian and uh, lecturer, author, Laura Mor- Morelli is going to present a talk on her award-winning book, Made in France. And that's all coming up, folks, this Monday, September 22nd, 4 p.m. I want you to circle it on your calendar. It's going to be held at the uh, Grand Reading Room of the Claire T. Carney Library at uh, our esteemed University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. And when you uh, present your talk this Monday, where do you normally begin? Is it something that uh, you decide in the moment? Or tell us a little bit about presentation sure. and the book itself. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my book Made in France covers all of the uh, the 22 regions of France and it um, it highlights the the best of French artisanal tradition. And so in my talk on Monday, I'll be giving a whirlwind tour of some of those wonderful uh, artisanal traditions, things like um, bronze from Paris, things like um, perfume and handmade quilts from Provence, uh, things like olive oil soap, some of those lesser known artisanal traditions, uh, handmade knives, Limoges porcelain from central France, Uh, from the north, things like uh, lace, and of course these arts of the table, which include not only things like cheese, but also things like crystal and um, and pottery. Still made by hand, and what I would imagine would be, you know, a a little shop, or by by the, the, the folks whose grandparents did this and passed it down? That's correct, and and what's fascinating about Europe and especially in, in France and Italy is that these um, these traditions are passed down from generation to generation and mm-hmm. I can give you so many examples of family enterprises that have been in business for literally hundreds of years, How many beautiful. generations and um, as I go around the world and I talk with these traditional artisans, what they tell me is that it's so important for them to pass on that torch of tradition to the next generation and uh, so that's that's fascinating and, and there are ways of learning and when you when you go into these shops and you see them done you understand how it takes years and decades to to use the eye and the hand yes. over and over and over mm-hmm. repeating the same gestures the same techniques and that's how these traditions are passed down through Almost the centuries in their dna you might even say absolutely and here sadly in america uh that kind of uh, passing the passing of the torch so to speak from one generation to another is vanishing quickly And, uh, you know, in my family, we had a diner, a little stainless steel diner, but the kids didn't want the restaurant business. So it was us, and that was the end of of the the tradition, so to speak. But in, in Europe, they still value that tradition which is wonderful it yeah. is and it's uh, it's fascinating that it can continue even yeah. after the the uh the industrial revolution yeah 
But, you know, this idea of passing on the torch of tradition is, is what was the inspiration for my historical novel, The Gondola Maker, because it, just as you say, I wondered what would happen if that son didn't want to carry on the tradition of his father. Yeah. And uh, that, that story sort of germinated in my head. So this is a historical novel? Correct. Yes, the Gondola Maker is a, is fiction, and it takes place in 16th century Venice. It tells the story of a gondola maker and um, and his complicated relationship with his son. Um, the son rejects his destiny as a master boat builder, but mm-hmm. then is lured back to restore an antique gondola with the idea of taking a girl for a ride. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in. It is a a personal pleasure to welcome Laura Morelli, who is uh, not only a wonderful author and a guide for you to answer so many questions and uh, just a a tremendous resource, Uh, but also uh, a guest this coming Monday. Uh, Laura will present a talk on her award-winning book, one of her award-winning books, Made in France. She has others, but uh, this will be uh, primarily the focus, and I'm sure you're going to mention the others at the Claire T. Carney Library Grand Reading Room. This is Monday, September 22nd, 4 p.m. It's free and open to the public. Folks, we have such a tremendous resource with our university Take advantage of it. We have a national celebrity. Take advantage of listening and let the words just enrich you. Uh, Not only about uh, Laura's past and why she does what she does, but also because you are going to be edified as well. And who knows, you may just want to go to France or or to Italy or to someplace around the world, right? Uh, Do you uh, love travel, or is it the place that you love? I I do. uh, I love the places (laughs) more than I love going through (laughs) the uh, the TSA security, truth be told. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) (laughs) I love getting there. Uh, uh, Tell us about when you are, let's let's, uh, take France. What do you eat? What do you drink? Where do you sleep? Uh, Do you go along uh, the back roads and uh, seek out the locals and ask them where they and their families go? I I do, yes. You you, you summed it up. You know, on my last trip to, my last research trip to France, as I was planning, um, I first at the top of my list because I was a female traveling alone I looked for inns that had fabulously reviewed restaurants and it didn't matter to me if it was a one star hotel or a four star hotel I wanted to eat well Yes, (laughs) Yes, yes. <laughs> and I really seek out the family-oriented, you know, family-run places that are authentic, that are off the beaten path. Yes. Um, and if you do go off the beaten path, you know, that's where the artisans are. Now, think about it. You know, in the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, fire was a huge risk for a city, and so the so-called fire arts, the ceramic and glass, were hardly ever. Uh, carried out Mm -hmm. within city walls. They were usually done in smaller towns or outside of the city. And so those traditions that have endured have endured in these little hill towns and places outside of Paris, outside of Florence, um, outside of the major destinations where tourists go. So if you want to see those people still working, you need to go off the beaten path. Yes, off the beaten path is right. Uh, I know we have some phone calls from uh, folks who'd like to say hello and in just a minute we will Uh, but uh, before we get to that uh, what about the ideas for your book let's stay with this one for the time being did the ideas come from these artisans or how do, do do those ideas evolve well, you know, my goal as an art historian is to equip and empower travelers to have those skills, to train their eye so sure. that, um, you know, so my focus in, in researching is, and writing is to help people, uh, you know, know that, first of all, I got to go to the local museum and, and see what things looked like 500 years ago or 800 That's years right. ago, because you'll get an, an immediate 
education that is 100% visual. And before you go to the shops, it's a great idea to hit those museums. So you really absorb the colors, the patterns, the styles that have been uh, in place there in that specific location for a long time. Right. Oh, what a see, I've learned two things in this short period of time that the fire in the city posed a tremendous threat to burning the cities (laughs) down and uh, get a footprint of where you are for more appreciation. Absolutely. Uh, Laura Morelli, our special guest this morning, the author of Made in Italy, Made in France, Made in the Southwest, and her historical uh, fiction uh, that is, I hear, rave reviews for the gondola maker. Thank you. Uh, And you know what? It shows that you have, you're a great storyteller. That's a tradition also, isn't it? Well, I think, you know, for me, of course, as an art historian, I love the objects, but what I really love are the people and the stories behind them because that's really um, fascinating. And, you know, you can't talk to somebody who was living in 1400, but you can talk to somebody still carrying on those traditions today. beautiful. How The stories are amazing. How fortunate you are. And also in that respect that you have the passion to appreciate that, but also you are in many uh, respects kind of like the facilitator of the time machine where you go back and through your love and expertise, you can bring some of that information forward for us to appreciate. Well, folks, there goes my uh, magnets on the refrigerator. I guess I'll have to start (laughs) start looking for some. (laughs) You you need an upgrade. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have to ship those back by a FedEx or anything. (laughs) Yeah, the the magnets uh, will have to go. Speaking of, of, you know, uh, shipping gifts, is it a good idea when when, uh, you were mentioning Murano and uh, uh, glass and uh, uh, porcelain and uh, knives and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the way TSA is and uh, you know travel and craziness is going on, do you recommend that folks maybe ship them back home? Well, it depends on what you buy. Um, you know, if you can find a portable souvenir, for example, a small leather box with your initials gilded on the top or um, a necklace or a pair of boots um, or something that you can, or a hat that you can easily bring on the plane, that is, of course, the easiest and the cheapest way to transport it home. There are certain things, however, that you won't be able to transport home very easily, um, knives, of course you won't be allowed to take on the plane at all Um, you know something fragile like glass or porcelain you may want to ship I usually advise people to stick with the major international carriers like FedEx UPS DHL um, for the simple reason that if you send it from through the local postal service you won't have the ability to walk back down the street and file a claim if it's missing so you want to stick with the major international carriers Mm -hmm. Um, it can be costly to ship, so you want to make sure it's something that you really love and really can't live without. Okay. Um, some merchants will be set up to ship things for you, and they even have sometimes special containers to pack goblets in, for example, or something in a particular shape. Right. So that's an option. And uh, in your book, Made in France, you're going to give the reader the uh, gift, the luxury of pointing out certain artisans, certain places where they They do get a good deal for their dollar, and I guess the first thing in any traveler's mind is, am I getting a fair deal here? Right. Well, you know, I I try – I give – travelers a few questions to ask when they are contemplating a purchase overseas you know one is is it authentic and you know another one is is it locally made another one is who made it and if, if you know the answer to those three questions and preferably if you're buying directly from the person who made it you really won't have to worry too much about cost or being scammed because, number one, you're buying directly from the artisan. There will be no middleman. It'll be the best price that right. you will get in that local economy. Mm-hmm. And it's your best 
guarantee against um, a tourist trap or being yes. scammed. But not only that, I mean, the value of buying directly from, from an artisan so far exceeds the monetary value that it's really about the cultural immersion and the experience and the interaction with an authentic artisan. Uh, that's where the value lays. Before we go to our phone lines, if any of you have questions to ask of Laura Morelli, who uh, you just uh, recently heard on the nationally syndicated travel show uh, with, with the Fromers. And uh, we heard, uh, we, we carry the show right here. Great. Um, I want you folks to understand that we have a tremendous resource with Laura, who will be appearing at UMD. And this is uh, courtesy of the revered director, Dr. Mel B. Yogan, his wonderful wife, uh, Cindy, at the Beauvoir Center for French Language and Culture, organizing a wonderful fall program. And uh, the uh, distinguished author who is in our midst right now, Laura Morelli, will be giving a very interesting talk. Uh, go by. I know that you'll be uh, signing books after your talk. You can get a chance to meet Laura, who uh, is like a Greek goddess. <laughs> well, let's not go that far. You don't have to worry about eating on, uh, on the little restaurants. You are perfect. <laughs> uh, and uh, this is going to be held Monday, September 22nd, 4 o'clock, at the Clarity Carney Library at the University of Massachusetts. Would you be kind enough to don those headphones so we can okay. say hello to uh, our callers? Can you hear okay? I can hear fine. Very Thank you. good. Hello there, caller. Welcome to the program. Hey, good morning, Mr. Phil, and good morning, Laura. Good morning. Good morning. Now, uh, let me preface everything by saying that I was born in the Azores. Okay. Okay. And one of the things that I was used to was having handmade stuff, everything from ceramics, to roofing tiles. Now, I, I'm sure that in Greece and in most of rural Europe, uh, roofing tiles are used frequently. But unfortunately, they are all made in factories now, except for a very few people who are left who are still doing ceramics and or roof tiles or both. Mm -hmm. And the thing that, as a matter of fact, I saw a news report that on one of the islands in the Azores, there was one person left out of the whole population of the island that still makes ceramics. Everything else is made in factories. Yeah, that's the way that the world is going. But uh, you have a point here, and Laura, if uh, a homemaker here in... Uh, let's say Massachusetts wants to get imported tile or imported marble from Rome or something, mm -hmm. do you uh, guide them in that respect as well? Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, um, you can import things for your home, for example, through certain organizations. I would direct people to some of the nonprofit organizations, of which there are many, really? um, whose goal it is is to connect local artisans who are still doing things in a handmade way, whether it's roof tiles or ceramics or baskets or whatever, then, sure. and connect them with um, a, an American market. Um, a really great one is Aid to Artisans, which is based in Hartford, Connecticut. There are many, many other um, small nonprofits who are doing really good work in matching artisans in very specific places with the American market. And um, so that's where I would start versus a commercial importer because the nonprofits are going to be more focused on um, sustaining those handmade traditions. What's the uh, uh, website one more time? Aid to Artisans is the, uh, the organization in Hartford. Now, folks, go to your website, uh, www.lauramorelli.com, and it's spelled M-O-R-E-L-L-I.com. Uh, they don't get any uh, Italian cheese, but will they? <laughs> 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 we, 
will you have a, you know information on how to connect to these nonprofits? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And um, if you go to my website, you can download a free guide that I have there that's called How to Go Shopping on Vacation Without Being Ripped Off. Oh, and there are five questions there that you should ask yourself before you make a purchase overseas. Um, and if you follow those, those questions, you'll be in really good shape. Jay, is there anything else you'd like to ask of Laura? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Bye-bye. You bye. too. You know, uh, with uh, the other books that you have authored, um, Made in Italy, Made in France, that you'll uh, talk about Monday, Made in the Southwest, I pick up from your accent that you're not from Bangor. No, but I'm not from Texas either, believe it or not. Many people in New England <laughs> Tag me for a Texan, but I'm from, I'm from the coast of Georgia originally. Are you? I picked up just a touch, just a touch. <laughs> Whereabouts? St. Simon's Island. Oh my goodness! Is, um, just a, 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 a little, a little known gem, but a I, national habitat. I, I, or, I try to keep it that way, but <laughs> yeah, yes, I, I know. Uh, but uh, a lot ha- of preservation has been going on there, especially for the uh, wildlife and whatnot. Just tremendous work. It's a, it's a beautiful place. And uh, a book signing is going to be uh, following the lecture that's free and open to the public. If you'd like to go by and uh, meet Laura Morelli, who holds a Ph.D. from Yale, where she was a uh, Bass Writing Fellow. She has taught art history at several universities. She is always, uh, you know, featured for her expertise on so many of the national shows from CNN to uh, Fromer's travel show, Travel Today, USA Today. Uh, Who is one of the most interesting people you have ever met in the world? Oh, wow, that's a good question. You know, one of the... I'll, I'll say one of the most interesting families that I've ever met in the world was a, a family in Deruta, which is a, a little hill town in Umbria in central Italy. Uh-huh. And when I uh, did my research for this, it's a big uh, center for ceramics. And when I did my research, I noticed that there were two uh, ceramic studios next door to one another with the same name, but they were not the same <laughs> business. <laughs> So there's a story for you, right? Yes. So I made a beeline to to these two two shops to talk to these families and find out, you know, why it is that they had two shops with the same name. Right. And, you know, it was one of those stories that you could just imagine that, you know, as far back as the Renaissance, sure. they were originally one family. And then in a certain generation, there were there was a difference of opinion oh, and yeah. they they formed two completely separate enterprises and continued along these artisanal lines and passing down these these traditions to the next generation and even remained next door to one another the hatfield and mccoys <laughs> the hatfield and mccoys of central italy how fascinating we have one minute and in that minute i want you to remove yourself from all the wonderful things that you've experienced in your life and tell me What your traveling, what your interaction with other people has taught you personally about life, about life in general? Mm. Um, I think one thing I've learned is that people are basically generous and they want to share their passion. Mm -hmm. And I have never been turned away from someone i've never come across an artisan who said well i'm not going to share my secret with you or anything like that people are 100 percent open and generous with sharing what they're excited about and i think that's a basic human need and perhaps they're just reflecting what they see in you laura morelli thank you so much thank you for having me it's been a pleasure